Hey everybody, it's Angelo from Angelo's Workbench. Thank you for coming on back and joining me as we go back in time for the Corvette ZR1. Welcome to video number two in the AMT Chevrolet Corvette ZR1 video series. Having fun with this kit, it's a great old kit. Don't forget to visit me on TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram. And the names you see here all is Angelo's Workbench. I've got lots of updates coming up and more work on this kit coming up right after this. Angelo's Workbench is proud to announce that this video series is sponsored by 9stepsindustries.com. They have sent me some nippers and some sanding sticks, an airbrush, a cleaning pot, some cutters, some tweezers, a whole bunch of tools. And they offer all these tools for sale at their website, 9stepsind.com. That's 9stepsind.com. You can go there and shop and use code ANGELO20 for 20% off your order today. I've been using this stuff through the filming of this video series and I am thoroughly impressed. Go check them out at 9stepsind.com, code ANGELO20 for 20% off today. Well, we can glue a few more things together here. I'm going to glue the transmission together. And uh, because why not? I'm gonna use these tweezers here to help me. It's nice gluing before you paint. You don't have to be quite as careful with the glue. Still a good idea to not get it all over the place, but uh, you have a little more flexibility. That looks good. And then uh, they sent me these um, part holders for when you're painting. And uh, look at how look at how they have the little rubber uh, heat shrink over the edges. That is awesome. Um, gives it a little more grippy but then also um, protects the parts. I also use these as, like, if I'm clamping, if I'm doing something. I have clamps, too. But, um, hey, I can take these, and I can go like that, and that will hold that transmission nice and tight while it's gluing. Why not? So then um, this part I am not going to glue on yet because um, – I want to be able to paint the underside aluminum without having any issues. So we'll just add that later. Um, it'll also give me the ability to, I believe part of this might be, may or may not be black. I've got to look at some reference photos. Um, so that'll give me the ability to work with that a little easier. However, these can go on now. And um, not the oil filler. I think I'll leave that off because I think that's a different color. But uh, we can definitely put these valve covers on. These valve covers look awesome. They have all the detail. And they say Corvette right on them. And, you know, if you were going to wire this, I, I think it would be very easy to do. Um, these parts look great for a kit from 1989. Like, I'm totally, uh, I'm totally impressed. And, uh, and I'm totally having a good time. Um, I love building motors. This is, uh, this is a lot of fun for me. In a lot of model kits, it's the part that comes first. So that's cool. Wow, that looks great right there. Oh, this is gonna look so good. I'm pretty I'm pretty excited about building the ZR1. The king of the mountain or the king of the hill or whatever they used to call it. Um in 1990, this was uh incredible high performance back then. And my dogs are going crazy. I don't know if you guys can hear that. We have five little tiny teacup chihuahuas. I call it the Chihuahua Army. And they are uh, in charge of security. And every one of them uh, has big dog syndrome. I think the biggest one is six pounds. They're all very small. And, um, and they like to cause trouble. Um, but, but they bark like crazy. If they hear anything, and hey, I tell them, good dog, you know, I want them to bark. If there's uh, there's somebody around that ain't supposed to be, I want to know it. And I want them to bark their heads off. So I need to apparently do a little research. Oh, I think I just found out. That's how this goes. Goes just like, mm hmm. Yeah, it goes just like that. Perfect. So I will, uh, might as well glue this on now. Here we go. And there is that. 
and then we'll let that cure. And then I'll do a little cleanup on it because I got a little seam there. And, uh, and whoa! And I got a little seam on the top, as I was saying. And then I just got to line this up right again. Ah, there it goes. A little bit of there that I need to clean up, but that will be easy to do later. With a little bit of this nine-step knife here. I love new blades. New blades are the way to go. Absolutely fantastic. Okay, so we'll let that cure. And uh, then it'll be time to mate the transmission to the engine block. And then to the spray booth to paint it aluminum or aluminum, depending on uh, where you live. Be back. So I have the transmission glued on, and now I am just working on the oil filler. I discovered that the oil filler is in fact silver. So I have removed this from the sprue. And now I'm just cleaning up the part a little. To make it able to be, boy, these are good tweezers. That looks marvelous. We have a little bit of extra on here. There we go. Perfect. Boy, those are good tweezers. Whoop, there they went. <laughs> it's right here. There we go. Didn't go far. Didn't go far because I didn't have to grip it very hard with the tweezers. The tweezers do their job very well. I hope my big head isn't getting in the way. Okay, so there's that. So now I'm going to put some glue in that filler hole. And now we're going to install the filler. And there's the oil filler installed. And that will be all aluminum, and then the cap will be black. There, you can see it right there. That looks perfect.
Well, I was taking a cruise through my spare parts bin, and uh, I found these um, that I apparently printed for something somewhere along the way. Um, these are 3D printed by me, and uh, I don't remember what they are to. They look like a new Corvette wheel uh, for the new Corvette. Um, and I think that I can use these quite nicely. There's big and littles, so there's the bigs, and here's the littles. And uh, I was just kind of test fitting the chassis here and um i don't want to these still need a little work so i don't want to jam them in there but um i just have to file out the inside a little bit and make room for the wheel but um but i can tell by the tire and uh let's see here let's uh let's kind of hold this in place this front suspension here get in camera here there we go kind of hold that in place and uh you know yeah that'll that'll be that'll be sweet that's a that's a good looking fit right there and um and then looking at the bigs for the back can i get that in there oh yeah i got it in there that one i've uh i have fit a little bit better and uh let's see let's get it flush with the wheel doesn't want to stay flush um yeah that looks that looks great right so i'll do them in uh in either a black or a silver one or the other we'll see and um i don't think chrome i don't think so black or silver depending on what i choose for a car color i still have not chosen the color for this for this for this beautiful metallic green molded body um but uh yeah so there's the wheel and tire problem sorted out we'll just uh prior 3d printing to the rescue that'll that'll work for me and uh and i think they'll look great um as for the rest i'm just uh going to de-sprue all of this and like by magic next time you see it they will all be de-sprued okay i have uh finished removing all of the parts from the sprues using those fantastic nine steps industries nippers um as you know i have the wheels and tires ready to go everything is basically at a stage now where we just need to go to paint so uh rather than paint the parts first i usually like to paint the body first because i shoot a 2k clear and that 2k clear needs uh some time to uh cure and uh it can cure and be gassing out while i'm prepping all these other bodies these other parts and painting these other parts so that kind of helps me keep the process moving and keep the build moving forward so um so i have all of the parts that need to be body color um basically gathered right here i have uh the side view mirrors are are pretty much molded into the body which um which is convenient you don't have to worry about forgetting them um i still have to clean the body uh some and and what i've been doing is i've been using these sanding sticks that the fine step that nine steps Industries sent over um so for example this one is 400 on one side 240 on the other 600 on one side and 800 on the other and then this one is a thousand and twelve hundred which comes in very handy these um they're i like the foam is very firm so just going in and sanding it out um is very easy so you'll see we've got a nice body line right there um that doesn't belong there a mold line parting line whatever you want to call it so i'm just gonna go over this real quick and uh, wow look at that it's gone already uh, this is fantastic new sanding sticks are uh, wonderful when they're new um and then when they wear in um they're quite useful for different things um so maybe you, you you take the grit down a little as you use them which is uh which is okay and then i will get in there with a scribing tool and get it the part that's in there so then i have over here on the other side i have some more to get rid of and that is just coming right off so easy um I, I know I'm beating a dead horse here, but for the age of this kit, this kit is quite impressive. Way to go, AMT. Um, still relevant and fun to build 30-odd years later. It's uh, really cool. Really cool. So, uh, so this is all looking really good. 
Um, and then I got a little one here, which doesn't belong. I'm very familiar with the body lines of this car, having owned, um, having owned many, many C4 Corvettes. Um, whoop, I turned off my light. Hold on a second. Uh, let's, ah, having a technical difficulty. Um, I just wanted to move the camera so that I could zoom out a little, um, and give you a better view of the sanding that I am doing. Um, and I accidentally turned off my light. So, so there we go. So this, I, so as I was saying, I'm very familiar with the body lines of this car, having owned so many one-to-ones. I was looking at, I keep a spreadsheet of cars I've owned, and I was looking, and I think I've had seven or eight of these um, C4 Corvettes over the years. They were just, they were just so much fun to drive, and you know, when you were in the car, like the C4 Corvettes, I really enjoyed the way the interior was when you got in. And uh, I don't know if you can see it in the interior tub or not. Um, I seem to have misplaced the interior tub. Ah, here we are. Let's see. So when you would open the door, so you can't really tell in this interior tub, but when you would open the door, there was like a deep well that your feet went into. It wasn't really a car that you got into. It was more like a car that you put on. Um, and once you were down inside the cockpit of that car, man, it was a fun place to be. Um, and I liked the way the headlights flipped over backwards and I liked the way the wipers, the windshield wipers met in the middle and then went up. It was just really cool things. And then when they released the C5 Corvette in 1997, they did away with the lion's share of that stuff. And I did own a couple few C5 Corvettes as well. But, um, but I always found myself gravitating back to the C4s um, just because of the way they were. I really enjoyed those cars. And, um, and building a model of the car is kind of a way of, you know, of me reliving that. And, uh, and I think that's what a lot of us model builders do. We, we build the cars that, that we have owned in the past and that we miss dearly and that, you know, we're, we're a part of our lives. Um, and then we also build the cars that we can't really afford to own you know, and, and never would be able to afford to own like Ferraris and Lamborghinis and stuff. And, and some of us can afford those cars and that's nice. And, and I'm very happy for the people that can afford those cars. I am not a member of that club. Um, I cannot afford one of those cars. I mean, I might be able to afford one of those cars if I allocated every single fiscal resource I have. Um, but I don't think that, uh, that I would want to do that. I mean, I'm not going to live in the c car, <laughs> you know, but, uh, but kudos to the guys who can afford those and, and, that's wonderful. You know, if they couldn't afford them, then then the manufacturers wouldn't make them. And if the manufacturers didn't make them, then the model car companies wouldn't make them. So so in a way, you know, we owe those guys, hey, thanks for buying those cars and and allocating your fiscal resources to those cars so that uh, so that the manufacturers will make them and then they will kit them and then we can uh, we can build them. And and they are wonderful. I do enjoy doing Ferraris. I have um um spoiler alert, I have some Ferraris coming up. Um, with another uh, sponsor of Angelo's Workbench that recently came on board. And if you're watching this video and listening to me drone on and on and on, you're going to have a, a, a little inside information. There is a, a, uh, a, a, po a recently popular model company that makes very high-level model kits that has entered into a partnership with Angelo's Workbench, and they have sent me some of their wonderful model kits, and I have them. And uh, and they are, in fact, wonderful. And they will be built on the channel. I think I'm going to do one of them after this Corvette. So so there will be uh, some Ferrari. There will be a Ferrari forthcoming um, that I think that you all will enjoy very much. I know I will. Um, but it's going to be a it's going to be a good time. So uh, so pretty much I've got this body ready to go. Um, I don't see anything else in the way of lines. The, um, these wonderful sanding sticks have, have done their job. And, uh, and this looks like it is ready for primer. And I'll find out if there's anything after I prime it that, that needs a little bit of uh, touch up with, uh, with a sanding stick or a razor blade knife. I will give the center of this a little bit of a key, uh, also with the sanding stick, just so that the primer has something really good to stick to. Um, and then when we are priming this body and painting this body, we will be using exclusively the nine step and, uh, excuse me, nine steps NSTL 001 V2 
is what it says right there. Signature airbrush, and you can see it's dirty. Um, I have been using this airbrush exclusively uh, in place of my Awada. And, um, and I really like this airbrush, and I'm blown away at how much this airbrush costs. Um, it is extremely reasonably priced and functions outstanding. So I am, I am very pleased uh, with this airbrush, and it has a lot of features. It is gravity feed, which is my favorite. Uh, and then to, to compare it to uh, my Iwata, I mean, they look very similar. They function very similar. And uh, this one costs substantially more. Um, I'm, I, you know, but, uh, Hey, in nine steps industries for their signature airbrushes here, um, you know, tools made by model builders for model builders. I believe it. Um, that's one of their marketing slogans, I believe from their website. And, um, and you can see this one's really dirty. I've got clear coat all over it. I've used it for a whole bunch of things already. And, uh, and now it's my go-to airbrush. Um, you know, and as I said, there's a lot of things that people send me that you don't hear about, um, because I don't, uh, you know, I, I don't enter into agreements with everybody because I don't need to. And, um, and, and if I get something and I really don't like it, um, you know, I am not going to tell you about it and be like, Hey, you know, just because I got this for free, you should go and check this out. Um, you know, that's not who I am. I, I do this to further the hobby and get people into the hobby. And if I'm recommending, you know, junk garbage tools to you, how, how much fun are you having in the hobby? You know, it's counter to what I'm trying to do. That being said, I also want to mention the fine steps, the nine steps industries. I don't know why I keep doing that. Nine steps industries, uh, paint brushes. I've had the opportunity to use a couple of these already. Um, and one of the challenges that I always have with paint brushes is finding ones with good small tips. And uh, here's the one I've used already. And um, these paint brushes are absolutely wonderful. And nine steps industries basically has you covered with all different kinds of tool paintbrushes, but look at how many different ones they have that have very fine tips. And it's always so hard to find good fine tip paintbrushes. These things are outstanding and they work so well and they clean up very well, I have discovered. Um, they seem to be impervious to lacquer thinners, which is good because I use a lot of lacquer thinner to clean things. Um, and, uh, and hey, Thanks, Nine Steps Industries, again, for, for putting out a quality synthetic paintbrush um, that, can, uh, that can hold up to what we need to do with, with our model building. Because paintbrush is, again, one of the most important tools that you use, besides the nippers, is your tweezers and your paintbrushes. And, not, and Nine Steps Industries seems to have you uh, covered in all those areas. So let's stop talking about Nine Steps for right now, and let's get to painting this. We're going to the paint booth. Okay, I've got here the Corvette, fresh from its bath in hot water, well, warm water, and Dawn dishwashing detergent. And I've got my paint stands ready, and I've even got the little nose thing on one of the Nine Steps Industries paint things. So now I notice that there's a very slight little tiny nub to attach onto, and this grips that marvelously. So uh, fantastic, we're good to go. So while I haven't really picked a color yet, I know that it's going to be a bright color. So I'm going to go with a white primer by Steinle Res, which is my favorite primer. And I'm going to be using my Nine Steps Industry Signature Airbrush, which I have right here. And uh, and we're going to uh, we're going to get started shooting some primer. This airbrush is really great. I'm a big fan. Gives you a nice smooth coat. A lot of airbrushing is mixing paint, and we're going to be talking about that for the color coat in a little while. Getting it to the right consistency is key. Now, this Steinle Res comes pre mixed, and it shoots very well, as you can see. You get a very nice, even coat of primer. So. And that is that. That part's done. Now we'll go on to the hood. There we go. Now let's go on to the hood. I like to get around the edges first. Make sure that I'm not going to miss any parts. 
because it's very easy to forget those little edges. You have to think of your parts as in three dimensions. So are you getting all three dimensions of the part? You can't just paint the part that everybody's gonna see. Now I wanna point out, and I looked at the body on this, and I did not scribe the panel lines. Uh, these are as they were molded. And I gotta say, they look fantastic. Um, there aren't a lot of model kits that I don't have to scribe the panel lines. And this is one of them. I got a little something funky going on on that hood. Got a little bit of fish eyeing going on. So while I did wash this in dishwashing detergent, there must be something still in it. So I will let this cure and then I will wet sand it and I will give it another coat of white primer when the time comes after it's cured. I do really want to do this in a, in a bright color though. I think the camera just is not high enough. There we go. We're gonna move you up. There we go. There, that looks a little better. Hope this is coming out clear. It's a very big challenge to uh, airbrush because uh, I obviously need to see too <laughs> what I'm doing and then have you uh, able to watch. I have a little tripod in front of the spray booth that enables me to share my progress with you in video. But at the same time, I have to be able to see and manipulate the airbrush. I really like this airbrush. I'm able to, with the point, I was concerned when they said it had a 0.2 millimeter tip. Um, I was concerned that I wouldn't be able to wet out my coats well enough. And as you can see, I can. It gives me a wide enough fan, uh, spray fan when I want to go down the body like that. But then it also gives me a close enough detail so I can get in tight and pull back on the trigger a lot less. So I'm putting less paint out, getting close, and get the areas that I need to. So it's a very good multi-function airbrush. You can get in up close, and you can also hang back and wet out a coat. That will be very handy when I'm doing clear coat. Clear coat is one of those things you want the first couple of coats to be fairly light, but then you, you need that wet coat to get a really good shine. And I'm able to do that with this airbrush because I did already paint something with it as a test. Uh, I test everything before it goes on camera and you get to see it. And uh, I find out if it's good before you see it. And this airbrush is great, you will see. Because we're gonna lay down this entire paint job together. All right, so the first coat of primer is on. Actually, technically that's the first and second coat. And, uh, and we'll let this cure. And uh, I'm gonna be doing some wet sanding on this hood because I got a little fisheye action going on there and I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is, but a little wet sanding and a little cleanup and then another coat of primer and uh, she'll be ready for color coat. Thank you for coming back and joining me for video number two in the AMT Corvette ZR1 video series brought to you by Nine Steps Industries. Come on back next week for video number three we we'll move this project forward a little more. Go ahead and check me out on Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram, all as Angelo's Workbench. Please like, comment, subscribe, share, send, uh, send me questions. I love to hear from you guys. I look forward to seeing you next week.